Hello, everybody. Welcome to a lecture on physics of organic light emitting diodes. I'm Jang Joo Kim, a emeritus professor from Seoul National University, Department of Material Science and Engineering. Uh, this uh, lecture is a rather introductory one. Who are not familiar with uh, organic semiconductor devices? But I'm expecting the students are familiar with uh, some physics of inorganic semiconductor uh, devices covered in undergraduate. Uh, there are three really short lectures. In the first lecture, I will discuss on the electronic structure uh, followed by optical properties of organic semiconductors. In the second lecture, or second part, uh, I'll discuss on the electrical properties of organic semiconductors. Uh, lastly, I will introduce you on the device physics of OLED, uh, including the light emitting processes, efficiency, and degradation. As you may know, organic light emitting diode, in short, OLEDs, are heterojunction light emitting diodes consisting of multiple organic semiconductor layers as shown in these diagrams. On the ITO uh, coated glass substrate where the ITO works as anode and transparent and you deposit the multiple organic semiconductor layers. Lastly, the cathode is deposited this is a simple one example of organic light emitting diode. And then the device is curved or passivated with a layer and capping uh, to protect the device from air or moisture. There are two keywords here. One is the organic semiconductor and the second one is the light emitting diode. I will first introduce you on the organic semiconductor itself and the compare with the inorganic semiconductors how they are the similar and how they are different uh, each other. The organic semiconductors are molecular solids composed of conjugated molecules possessing delocalized pi electrons in molecules uh, conventionally presented as having alternative single and double bonds, as shown in this uh, the figure. You can see that there are double bond, single bond, and also single bond, double bond alternate each other. That is so-called conjugated. And the one of the uh, double bonding is the pi bonding, as you know, and the electrons forming pi bond is called pi electrons. Uh, these conjugated molecules have a delocalized electron cloud as shown schematically in these anthracene um, molecules. The, these uh, uh, electron clouds are shown for the uh, lowest bonding orbital uh, pi electron cloud. You can see that uh, these electrons are delocalized all over the uh, molecules and the pi electrons are considered to belong to the molecules instead of a certain bonding. And it is the delocalized electron cloud that leads to the semiconducting properties in conjugated molecules because they are delocalized uh, within the molecules so that it is uh, easily perturbed by the uh, external forces like light or electric fields. The, those are the conjugated molecules and the molecular solid, the semiconducting molecular solids are composed of uh, discrete uh, semiconducting molecules held together by Van der Waals forces. The, in contrast, molecules consist of atoms held together by covalent bond. All of you know that the covalent bond is much stronger than Van der Waals forces 
so that the molecular bonding forces between molecules is rather weak. Therefore, the materials are soft and lightweight compared to the inorganic semiconductors. This soft and lightweight nature of organic semiconductors have advantages for flexible, rollable, and even for wearable devices. Uh, the, in contrast to the inorganic semiconductors also, electrical conductivity is much more poor in organic semiconductors. That's actually, this poor electrical conductivity is disadvantages uh, in organic semiconductors. Also, that requires uh, thin layers for devices, uh, like a nanometer thick, at most 100 nanometer thick uh, devices. That's because of the little intrinsic carrier densities. Carrier density is almost negligible intrinsically, so that the, in order for the current to flow, we need injected charges, the so-called injected current. So injected current means that the charge neutrality is not the conserved here, and the space charges, they correspond to the space charges. Also, the carrier mobility is much lower. That, those uh, properties are this, uh, compared here. So electron mobility, for instance, uh, for silicon is about 1,000, but anthrax and crystal case, even for the crystal case, that is one square centimeter per volt sec. So the mobility is low. You can see also the concentration of intrinsic carrier density is uh, almost uh, 10 to the 10 for silicon, but anthrax and case is negligible there. That means that the poor conductivities, but the, we can overcome these poor conductivity disadvantages by using thin layers, nanometer thick layers. Also, organic semiconductors have a low dielectric constant, like a 3.2 for anthracene versus 11.7 for silicon. The implication of a low dielectric constant is quite uh, significant. For instance, external binding energy is much big, uh, much bigger in organic semiconductors compared to inorganic semiconductors. If you just look at this binding energy of uh, the plus and negative charges, you can see that the, there is a uh, epsilon in denominator. As that means that the binding energy of uh, organic semiconductor is about uh, four times the bigger than silicon. So, uh, that implies a lot of differences in the, the light emission processes. Also, the refractive index is small, uh, which is advantages for light restriction compared to inorganic LEDs. If you look at the outcoupling efficiency uh, from the layers, you know that the, if light is coming out from the bigger refractive index to the smaller refractive index, then there is a total reflection at the interface, uh, as you can imagine from the light emission from the water to the air. Uh, the, the, that expressed uh, related to the refractive index of the light emitting layer. So this is, uh, which, uh, you can see this from this equation, light extraction can be larger for uh, in organic light emission, all that uh, compared to inorganic LEDs. Uh, the, the, another advantage of uh, molecular, the uh, organic semiconductors is that the, coming from the molecular properties of individual molecules are retained in the solid state because uh, the binding energy between molecules is a van der Waals force so that the, uh, the, the molecular characteristics are quite maintained, retained in the device. In other words, by developing molecules, so we can have a molecular solid uh, retaining the molecular properties. So variety of new materials uh, with tuned properties are possible because chemistry uh, is well developed nowadays. Also process itself is simple, 
and the low temperature processing. So advantages for large area devices such as displays. So the, the, if you, the, these are the table comparing the inorganic semiconductor, for instance, silicon and uh, organic semiconductors with the anthracene crystal case here. Uh, because of the characteristics, uh, organic semiconductors are, uh, they are mainly used for the devices uh, the requiring the larger, flexible, and cost-effective, such as the displays for OLED or solar cells and uh, wearable transistors and so on. Now the, we need to understand the electronic structure of a molecular solid to understand the properties of uh, or organic semiconductors. The, I, I explained briefly the electronic clouds uh, of uh, the conjugated molecules, for instance, anthrax, and these are the core, the, uh, the rings, uh, yeah, and this is anthrax molecules. If you look at the just core levels, core levels are not delocalized. They are localized to atoms. The, and, and, uh, and so on, so that uh, you can see the core levels are this separate each other, uh, locally indicating the localized and the separated by these energy barriers here. But uh, if you look at just the pi electrodes, uh, they are conjugated and uh, they are delocalized. And uh, the highest uh, molecular orbital is called HOMO, uh, highest occupied molecular orbital. So the, the electrons are occupied up to this level and uh, this is called Homo level, and the the upper the level, the above the homo level, is called uh, empty. Sorry, that there's empty, and no electrons, and that's called lowest uh, unoccupied molecular orbitals. That actually is the counterpart of the valence band H and the conduction band H uh, in inorganic semiconductors. But this is molecular levels. If they form molecular solid, still uh, they uh, have uh, some difference in energies because they are uh, actually they have uh, they, they form solid uh, with the van der Waals forces, even though those are weak, and uh, the the energy levels uh, of a homo band or a lumo band are a little bit different from the molecular pictures because of the interaction between the neighboring molecules. That's so called. Uh, polarization energies. So homo level is a little bit higher and the lumo band is a little bit lower than the corresponding molecular uh, orbital energy levels. You can see that the, the, there is a barrier for the electrons to move from one molecule to other molecules. So there is a, a usually, there is a still some band natures, but still uh, there is a barrier for hoping electrons moving from one molecule to other molecules. Uh, that is represented by this way. But the drawing the band diagram, band diagram by this picture is rather complicated. So people just use just the two lines as shown here. The, so just indicate the homo level and homo band and the lumo band and the Fermi levels. Sometimes just uh, get rid of a Fermi level and just to show this uh, Homo and the lumo level. This is empty state, uh, empty and band gap here, uh, homo lumo gap, or the tesla band gap is almost the same concept as in inorganic semiconductors. So the, the OLED or the many multi-layer heterojunction devices have energy diagram like here. This is a, a simple three layer, three organic layer uh, OLED energy band diagrams. So this is a anode, transparent anode, and uh, the cathode, there are three organic layers. These are the homo levels, and these are the lumo levels. So this is, uh, I hope you are familiar with uh, these uh, diagrams in the, in the coming uh, slides. Now, uh, I think that's a brief, this is a brief introduction on the electronic structure of a molecular solid. Now let us move on to move to the uh, optical properties of molecular solid. There are many uh, optical properties, of course. Uh, the, uh, sometimes reflection, transmittance, uh, and so on. But
But uh, in this class, we are more or less interested in the process of absorption and emission. This diagram shows uh, absorption spectrum and the emission spectra uh, of this molecule in different uh, states. Uh, this is a solution PL, uh, this blue one, and this two is uh, solid. The, this molecule is uh, doped in this molecular host. And uh, you see that the, this is the absorption of this molecule in solution, this dashed line. Uh, the, you can see that the are peaks. Yeah? These are the bivronic peaks uh, the, of one state. And uh, you can see, even though that is not clear, this, this emission spectra also shows some kind of bivronic peaks. These is are not very apparent for these molecules. You know, the, the absorption maxima is actually in the blue uh, light regions, and uh, this emission spectra is red shifted from the absorption peak that is called uh, Stokes shift. This is uh, observed in many molecules due to the Frank Condon principle. You know, the, the excited state have a different uh, uh, electronic distributions from the ground state so that the, uh, the nuclear positions changes in excited state because of the change in the electronic configurations. Actually, this stock shift, uh, uh, Frank Condon principle, can be explained a little bit with these uh, energy term, uh, energy diagrams uh, of molecules. This is a little bit more complicated than the previous one shown. In this case, this is just electronic uh, the diagram, but this, uh, this diagram includes the bibronic energy levels uh, as shown here and here. These are the electronic energy level. And uh, uh, the excitation, absorption process uh, in the in usually invisible range actually change the excited molecules from the S1 state to S2. S0 state to S1 state to S2 state. Here, the S0 state is called the, uh, is the ground state. This is the first excited, and this is the second excited uh, state. Uh, this, uh, the S0, it sometimes is related to homo level, homo band, and this is the first excited uh, uh, lumo band, and the second lumo band, and so on. So, this is uh, sometimes in convention. Uh, for the, uh, to discuss the many cases with the, the spectroscopic properties in for the physical chemistries. When the, the molecule in ground state, uh, vibronic level is also in ground state. So energy tr the absorption process is, rela uh, is related to the energy difference uh, between this S0 vibronic ground state also to the S1 state and the different bivalent levels here. Yeah. So energy, the, the photons required to observe light is, is actually the, the length of these uh, arrows. And, but the, in the emission process, uh, the, that transition takes place from the ground state, state of electronic, uh, vibronic ground state of uh, excited electronic state, so that the, that is uh, the correspond to these arrows transition arrows. So you, if you compare the this, uh, length of these arrows, this is smaller than this absorption process. So that, that is uh, related to the stock shift here. So this probably uh, my explanation is enough for you to understand that. But anyway, the, the usually we observe this uh, stock shift uh, and that can be explained then uh, by Frank Condon principles uh, based on these uh, energy diagrams and also sometimes other uh, potential energy diagrams.